Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition of Story. Government's COVID-19 prevention initiative for the private sector is bankrolled by the government of Taiwan. A website is launched to track interventions of the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan. And cash prizes are awarded to winners of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports local competition. The government of Taiwan has stepped in yet again to assist St. Lucia in its COVID-19 response. A check presentation ceremony was held on Tuesday, 27th April to fund the Ministry of Commerce Infection Prevention Initiative that is geared towards enhancing the capacity of lower income level staff and owners of micro, small and medium enterprises to sanitize their domestic and business environment. We have a report. The initiative was designed in collaboration with the business community to assist the owners and lower-income employees of micro, small and medium enterprises, SMEs, to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. SMEs have been hard hit by the pandemic, given the need to curtail business activity to prevent the spread of the virus. This exacerbated the resources of not only the businesses, but the lower income level employees as well, who may not have had adequate resources to sanitize their homes to prevent the spread of the virus. Honorable Bradley Felix is the Minister for Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs. In response to a request from the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, the MSME support program was conceptualized as a COVID-19 prevention initiative geared towards enhancing the capacity of lower income level staff and owners of micro, small and medium enterprises to assist with their adherence to COVID-19 protocols. This was in an effort to curtail the spread of the coronavirus. The government of St. Lucia is pleased to receive assistance of just under EC $1 million from the government and people of Taiwan through the Embassy of Taiwan in St. Lucia. The funds will be utilized to provide supplies to 5,000 staff at the lower income level and 3,000 owners of micro, small and enterprise enterprises to enhance the capacity to adhere to two components of the COVID-19 protocols, wear a mask and sanitize. Taiwanese Ambassador His Excellency Peter Shen said that the initiative is geared towards enhancing the capacity of lower income level staff and owners of SMEs to sanitize their immediate domestic and business environment to abate the spread of the coronavirus. This program aims to support micro, small, medium enterprises through providing sanitizing items that the business community require for reopening. I would like to commend the determination and the efforts of Honorable Prime Minister Alan Shasney and Honorable Minister Brady Felix and the government of St. Lucia to combat the pandemic and rejuvenating the economy. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Sophia Henry, thanked all those involved for their assistance. We were encouraged by the speedy action of the Department of Economic Development in processing our request for assistance from the government of China, Taiwan. Thousands of lower income employees and owners of MSMEs will receive reusable face masks and a variety of cleaning supplies for use at home and in their business. The initiative was very well received by the government of China, Taiwan, and the processing of the request was expedited by the local embassy. Executive Director of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, Brian Luizzi, indicated that following talks with relevant entities, one of the priorities was to see the safe reopening of the economy. And one of the things we've said is that we want to see St. Lucia recover and see the economy open safely and we want businesses we want to help businesses especially the small businesses develop the capacity to operate safely so we will give them information but we must give them the tools to do so and we thought this type of initiative will help them change the signs that are on their doors that says no mask no entry to no mask come in we'll give you one 
So we don't turn business away because we need businesses to operate and we need the small and micro businesses to operate. This initiative will cost some 945,800 EC dollars and will target 5,000 staff at the lower income levels and 3,000 owners of micro, small and medium enterprises. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The government of St. Lucia has launched a website dedicated to its economic recovery and resilience plan. The online platform was created as an avenue for the monitoring of 32 interventions spanning its six pillars. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Finance is Esther Rigobert. To this end, the ERRP website will provide a perfect platform to evaluate, monitor, and provide feedback on the various initiatives being implemented by the government of St. Lucia. The public will be able to track the progress and give suggestions for improvements as the various measures are being rolled out. Rigobert adds that this resource will also foster greater accountability and transparency for the work being done by various government agencies. Pillars of the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan are stimulating the economy, fast tracking shovel ready projects, strengthening social protection systems, accelerating legislative reform for the productive sector, strengthening the healthcare system, and building resilience against disaster risk and climate change. Web developer Marvin Hutchinson says details on any of these can be easily accessed from the main web page. This landing page basically gives you all the information regarding the ERRP um, program, as well as quick links to the respective pillars and the other programs involved in the um, recovery, the response of the um, COVID-19 pandemic. Now to access uh, the, the respective pillars, you could either go through any of the quick links here, or you could go to the ERP tabs here. You are introduced to the six pillars, the three recovery and the three resilience pillars. Now, any pillar here can be accessible. So you just click on any of the cards and it presents you all the initiatives under that pillar. The Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan website address is errp.info. In COVID-19 developments, active cases on Ireland registered a drop to double digits this week after 16 recoveries were announced Monday 26 April. As of that date, 97 were in care for the virus. On the other end of COVID-19 response, vaccination steadily increased. The national campaign continues its second phase into this week catering to persons at moderate risk of infection, as well as those due for their second dose of the vaccine. Vaccine venues for Wednesday, 28th April, are Bexar Wellness Center, Denry Mothers Preschool, Sufre Hospital Ground, VG Sports Complex, Monrepo Wellness Center, and the T. Roche Miku Wellness Center. Individuals who receive the first dose of the vaccine during the week of the 1st to the 6th of March are encouraged to visit the vaccination sites nearest to them during this week to receive the second dose. Individuals should also work with the vaccination card, which was given when the first dose of the vaccine was administered. 23,941 individuals have received their first dose and 392 have received their second dose to date. In the latest update from the Belmont Observatory in St. Vincent, while the last Sufria volcano continues to erupt, Overall seismic activity remains low since the April 22nd explosion. Seismologist Rod Stewart says that the pattern is now typical of the growth and destruction of lava domes. He says the team is now challenged with trying to compare the lull with activity during the pre-eruption months. December, January, February, when we were having very gentle dome growth, the only signals we saw then were recorded on a station near the summit. Now that station is being destroyed by the eruption. So we don't know if those small events are occurring at the moment. But ignoring that, we are not having any of the events that we've been seeing um, throughout this explosion series. So that, that's a good point. It shows that the volcano's not got a lot of stress inside it. 
Last night, we recorded another signal from a lahar on, we think, the eastern side of the volcano. We expect to record these from time to time. But really, seismically, it's quiet. An observation flight took place Tuesday this week in a fixed-wing aircraft. Visibility was poor with clouds blocking the crater for much of the time. The team at the observatory advised that explosions with accompanying ash fall of similar or larger magnitude can restart with little or no warning. Relief efforts continue meantime. St. Lucia assisted in facilitating a Cuban shipment of supplies to victims. Nemo St. Lucia on April 19th and 20th, 2021 received from the government and people of Cuba on behalf of the government and people of St. Vincent a donation of approximately 40 tons of food supplies, water and plastic tanks. As usual, we're just playing our part in the relief effort to help St. Vincent. Um, St. Vincent is our neighbor, so we have to look out for them. So much thanks to the Cubans for the relief and we've been assisting them in offloading the aircraft, loading the containers to take up to Nemo, to take to the vessel down to St. Vincent. So in all, we want to say thanks to Cuba, thanks to everybody, all the St. Lucians that have been, you know, supplying relief for St. Vincent. We want, I, I personally want to say a big thank you and just hope that they recover in good time. The cargo was transported to Port Castries and loaded onto the Venezuelan naval ship by the San Lucia Cadet Corps. On behalf of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are extending gratitude to the Cubans for their generous donations. Still with volcano relief efforts, the St. Lucian diaspora in New York will host a benefit for victims of the ongoing volcanic eruption in St. Vincent. The fundraiser, a grand food extravaganza, will feature Caribbean cuisine on sale at Sonia's Place, 824 Hakima Avenue, New York, on Saturday, 1st May, from 11 a.m. The venue will also serve as a drop-off location for non-perishable food and personal care donations. St. Lucians in the tri-state area are encouraged to support this gesture. The Babono Day Original Committee of New York City has collaborated with home-based non-profit Rice St. Lucia, Inc to organize this event. The National Youth Council is using the Youth Month activities to promote the importance of exercising one's franchise. We have a report from an episode of their Youth Month series dubbed Run the Talk that features their value devote campaign. Take a look. The celebration of the work and achievements of young people in St. Lucia continues as part of Youth Month 2021. A staple of this year's activities is the Run the Talk series of the Value the Vote campaign spearheaded by the National Youth Council. Ajani Lebon, second vice president of the National Youth Council, says the campaign encourages youth to become more involved in St. Lucia's democracy. We know that you know, St. Lucia as a 42-year-old um, independent state does not to some extent have a picture of young people who are meaningfully integrated and mainstream within youth development. So we recognize that there is need for young people to be placed within a society or to understand the role that they play within the broader society. So the Value in the Vote campaign seeks to do just that, just that in providing young people with the platform to which they could sort of express not just their own opinions as to how the country should be developed, but also to understand how the roles of key institutions like the National Youth Council, clubs and organizations, and other civil society organizations play a role in the development of society. The first installment of the weekly series discussed the state of youth development in St. Lucia. National Youth Council President Nias Alfred says while consistent improvement has been obtained during the last 10 years, more can be done. I believe that we need to get to a point in youth development in St. Lucia where youth development is people-centered. It is youth-centered. And everything that we do has to come out of the input and the values and the contributions of our young people. And I think that is why a series, a campaign like the Value in the Vote campaign is so important because it allows for young people to be able to contribute directly to what they want to see. Director of Youth in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Mary Wilfred, says an important step towards the improvement of the youth sector it was the separation of the Youth and Sports Department in 2017. Before you had a Youth and Sports Director and now 
the, 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 the goal was to have youth have the separate budget so they can know, um, measure the outcomes of what they're doing and sports having a separate budget. And that gave us the liberty to now look at youth work in through different lenses that if we now have a youth section of the ministry, how do we um, engage young people to become problem solvers in the community? And here came the youth workers. They are young people living in the community and we see them as our, um, you know, as our foot soldiers. <laughs> Director of Youth Mary Wilfred, as she contributed to the panel discussion at on NTN from the Government Information Service. Homer DeMarc reporting. Thank you, Homer. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All. And she told me that mouth renting is very important for healthy teeth. How so? Rinsing with water gets rid of food in between your teeth, which can protect you from getting cavities. No way! So after I eat or drink anything, it's a good idea to rinse out my mouth with water. Yes! Make sure to spit out the water after rinsing because swallowing will only bring the germs into your body. Remember, water is an easy and cost-effective way to instantly boost your health and a healthy body to fight many diseases including COVID-19. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tan Chanel, Monsieur Madame Department de Responsabilité, Reformation en Gouvernement Celle-ci, la CGIS, CPP, Télévision Nationale, PINTN, Cavazato, Nouvelle Aquayol, Cavazato, Primus Hutchinson. Celle-ci, j'appuie une initiative pour encourager les étrangers pour visiter PIA pour une six semaines de vacances. C'est un programme qui le gouvernement et le ministère des Affaires touristiques considère comme un voyage international qui a augmenté en résultat de service de la vaccine qui a venu encore plus avec là à présent. Pour ça, cela, c'est ici, j'ai embrassé un programme qui a apporté nous à Livet. Côté, il y a un touriste qui a resté six semaines en place. Six semaines plus à sous vacances. Et qui aussi ça travaille euh, pendant que vous êtes sous vacances, ça c'est travail qui a fait côté de sortir euh, et tout ça fait ça à façon euh, service internet. Les étrangers qui sont intéressés, ça a plein d'applications et arrangements qui ont fait après, côté de un gymnase et puis on a ces compagnies qui ont continué le service de transportation pour les touristes ou les belles ici. L'initiative ça a fait possible pour ces touristes-là qui ont participé à ce programme-là. Vous trouvez spécial service de montagne en cette ici. Compagnie Sala, qui est responsable pour ces étrangers-là participer à plusieurs activités. Par exemple, apprendre à suite manger coyol, visitation dans les forêts PIA pour aller nager en la mer, pour monter montagne piton avec l'autre activité locale. Cette ici établit le programme Sala Livet, particulièrement comme résident en ces pays internationaux, qui a formé des plus gros places touristiques pour cette ici qui a vécu aussi l'intérêt pour le voyage international. Pendant ces étrangers à ce vacances, ils ont trouvé la liberté pour faire travail par Internet, comme on dit tout à l'heure, par des hôtels. Il est aussi possible pour ces étrangers à 
expérimenté en l'eau amusement avec l'autre activité pendant euh, en même temps je vais suivre tout protocole pour protection contre le corona c'est que ça a, ça a choisi pour rester en plusieurs facilités qui j'ai bien certifié à ces protections ça là qui est en place pour contre le corona après 14 jours c'est que j'ai ça là qui a visité plusieurs belles places à cette ci du moment ça là je sais tout cela mais c'est que j'ai là qui a aussi ouais ils bracelet pour montrer qui y a visité cette ci du moment les y a promené au Liban pays là y a une petite six pieds distance et pour toujours porter masque à souffrir de yo. Avant, mais c'est facilité touristique spécialiste qui j'ai apparu. Oui, c'est vrai, yo. C'est tout cela, c'est Barefoot Holidays, St. James Travel and Tours, et uh, Serenity Vacations and Tours. Là, c'est et toi, ça, là, ça, c'est yo, d'accord pour rester plus que six semaines, que ça fait un rangement avec les spécialistes, là, pour organiser ça, bah, yo. Organisation slash sport et facilité une délégation hot bureau premier ministre là pour visiter projet de développement et au pas Himanora à effort les ça fait le 21 mois d'avril 2021. Parmi ces Grecs qui étaient en délégation, c'était premier ministre honorable Alain Chasne, grand chef pour conseil slash sport exécutif de Pormana, un ministre des Affaires Finances, Mademoiselle Esther Rigobot, géré pour slash sport Monsieur Darren Snack. À ce moment-là, l'autre go grec aménagement a fait cela. Pour ce projet, vous visitez, c'était un nouveau travail qu'a fait à ce projet Nefla et à qui manière pour porter service et faire changement qui nécessaire pour projet Nefla. En parmi parmi ces transferts, ces facilités qui nécessaires, à chimer, faciliter le quarantine en parmi l'autre. J'ai vu pour cela, pour parler de manière de grandes activités économiques qui ont eu pour international qu'a porté aussi l'autre nécessité qui critique et pour qui tout ça fait à façon qui a suivi tout le protocole. Il dit que ces préparations sont là qui ont fait possible pour nous une facilité qui peut avancer en service avion à cette ci Premier ministre, c'est le CEO, on a Alain Chasné, pour renforcer confiance li en capacité, cela se pas, et déclarer que le projet de développement et au port Hironora, qui a un bénéfice pour cette ci et tellement, et qui a fait possible pour cette ci venir plus capable en bas compétition de destination internationale. Il y a aussi complémenté cela pour qu'à bâtir pour Genève Sala, ça a été nécessaire pour croiser via l'aéroport de Wanora. Chef officier des affaires éducation, c'est aussi le département éducation, ça c'est Dr. Fiona Philip Mayer, qui a appuyé à sous les parents et les citoyens, c'est aussi pour prendre la responsabilité au plus sérieux pour les étudiants de vie qu'on a exemple. Dr. Mayer, qui était adressé PIA comme l'école vue en opération la semaine passée, fait appel là pour les parents pour suivre tout le protocole contre la maladie de Corona. Excellent chef de l'éducation, c'est le CIA. Nous tous savons ce qui est nécessaire pour sa fête et nous tous ni capacités et avec aussi responsabilité pour sa fête. Pour assurer que nous établissons des conditions qui sont continuellement protéger les étudiants, particulièrement les gens pour laver les mains nous, pour ne pas engager dans des situations nous savent qui sont difficiles, qui peuvent porter plus de problèmes dans nous. So, C'est la responsabilité de grand monde pour protéger ces plus petits. So, nous avons demandé à tout le monde pour travailler avec nous. Nous savons que la situation n'est pas, pas aisée par les pièces de monde, c'est une difficulté pour plusieurs personnes. Mais si nous travaillons ensemble, nous savons que ce moment là nous ça aide quoi nous nous ça aide société nous so nous ca demander tout le monde pour travailler avec nous pour garder manière yo même ca ça aider ce moment là qui plus petit pour nous ça ni l'école avec nous ca prédier l'école ca rester ouvert juste nous fini pour faire de temps nous mais nous ca just prédier là nous tout travailler ensemble il possible pour nous toutes et avant nous fermer le euh, programme là fini nouvelle nous un petit annoncement pour côté ces divers côtés yoka au fait la vaccine eh bien euh, demain mercredi la vaccine qui a fait ça c'est demain mercredi le 28 à avril euh, service la vaccine qui a un wellness center en Bexo Denry Mothers Preschool et uh, l'hôpital Soufrié et aussi qui a un Vigi Sports Complex ça c'est la Vigi côté Grand Bowl Grand Bowl Sport euh, avec un Savant Sport 
avec euh, Wellness Center Moïpo. Uh, jeudi, le 29 avril, le service de la vaccine a uh, la paresse à Deriso et aussi à uh, Darren Summit Cricket Grounds. Ça, c'est un beau séjour. Vendredi, le 30 avril, le uh, service de la vaccine a uh, Philip Marsland Grounds à uh, Vieux Fort et à uh, Darren Summit Cricket Grounds à uh, beau séjour, à uh, Vichy Sports Complex, à uh, Multipurpose Center Barbono, à uh, Wellness Center Labouri. Uh, Fisheries Complex La Chouazé, uh, Multiple Center à uh, Miku et un uh, Wellness Center à uh, Jack Mel. C'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vais mettre sur le temps pour regarder. Je vais vous inviter à ce projet. Et puis, moi encore, si vous concevez la ville, je vais vous présenter une nouvelle à Kouyo. La présente, je vais vous présenter au Genel et que vous dites Genel. Bienvenue après une bonne vague. Merci, Apple Prime. And that brings us to the end of MTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 p.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Del Norville.